today's video is to talk about who you are who you really are and not all the things that we have become identified with and lost ourselves in so for me my whole journey my whole life has been about um, ultimately expanding my consciousness beyond the illusion that I am this physical shell, this physical body, this vessel that we use to navigate life. So this really, um, this isn't a belief either, this isn't something you need to believe in or that um, I want you to blindly follow what I'm saying. This is something that you can experience for yourself. Um, I experienced it through this near-death experience and over a week in a coma, that profound awakening that has changed me forever. Um, but you can also find out the same truth through many different paths, one of which is, is meditation and find out for yourself. But I guess for me, if, you, if you're anything like me, most of us look in the mirror and we go, this is me. And then we see things out there and we say, that is not me. But that's not the truth. Ultimately, you've never met any other being. You've always met pieces of yourself everywhere you go. Which is why it's so important to honour uh, all expressions of life. Um, to honour other people by giving them your full presence and being there not just using people I guess waiting to talk and treating people as like a cog in, in, a, in, a, in a set of gears um, that are going to give you a desired result but the question is who do you think you are so the image in the mirror is generally what most people would say I am but for me, I guess, I came out of my first radical reconstruction and the image in the mirror was completely different. I was like, who, who are you? You know, I had to get used to this new dude and <clears throat> ultimately learn to love this new person, which was a task. This was a journey, but this didn't happen once. This happened again and then again with a new face, and then again with a new face. And each time I looked in that mirror and it was someone else looking back at me. So, you know, the ego, this sense of me, <clears throat> I guess my path has been all about dissolving um, this identification with something that ultimately we are infinitely greater than so this isn't to deny our human experience it's not to deny the fact that you are this perfect one-time only sacred and unique expression of consciousness universal consciousness moving into form and having an experience that we call life <clears throat> Okay, that's life is sacred and you are perfect um, and a sacred expression of the universe. That's for sure. But ultimately, we are not that image in the mirror. That, that's a massive fallacy um, or misidentification with, with what we are. So the next question is, you know, if I'm not that, that image in the mirror, like, am I the thought? Am I the voice that's in the head? Well, no, of course we're not. But when we are, especially when we live in stress, in our survival reactive patterns and carry a lot of pain, um, past pain, 
um, which leads to beating ourselves up or judging other people constantly and blaming people and things, then we become highly identified with that voice in the head, the, the voice that I, I call it the mental terrorist. Because that's what it does. It's the terror threat that you don't hear about on the news tonight. It's a terrorism happening inside the minds of billions of people on planet Earth right now. And it literally torments the host. It drives people to carry out immensely unloving, unconscious, dysfunctional behavior. But you are the awareness having an experience, which is a thought. Because you can observe a thought. You can watch a thought in the head and see it pass through and figure out, am I going to identify with this thought or not? This is metacognition. Okay, so our ability to observe these mental patterns, this mind energy, and ultimately choose, are we going to act on it and behave like a twat? Or can we just see it as just a thought, as just a, ultimately a, a record player, a conditioned mind pattern that just arises from the subconscious. So thinking about thinking ultimately is, is what metacognition is. So we can observe a thought, so we're not the thought. We're not the charge in the body, that, that huge flood into the bloodstream that happens when we get, you know, our blood boils. And we get that reactive charge in the body, that pain. We can watch that happen. So we're not the charge, we're not the thought. And ultimately, you are not the physical body. And it's no wonder we've been conditioned to, or programmed is the best word, into identifying with things that we are ultimately not. I mean, we... Billions of people believe that they came from a monkey. Um, or to be more correct, a, a shared ancestor. But let's just dumb it down here. Literally, good morning kids. In today's school lesson, today's class, we're going to teach you that you came from a monkey. Um, and so because we believe that we are matter and you were given a name and an identity and taught to identify with your mind through all of your schooling and generally not think for yourself at all unless you came across one of those awesome teachers those incredible teachers that are out there and they really got the students in that class to think for themselves to question question authority and to go out into the world and begin their learning the moment they leave school that's where the true education happens. Like Einstein said, don't let your schooling interfere with your education. Um, so, but unless you've had that experience, for most of us, we've just been programmed to identify with the mind and ultimately that mental terrorist, that little voice in your head, this is me. Um, but ultimately... The unified state of consciousness is where we all have come from and it's where every one of us goes back to. This is something that is more real than any other textbook or documentary or authority figure or politician can ever tell you about. This is the ultimate truth that has been repeatedly spoken about by countless near-death experience survivors like myself and spiritual teachers um, in esoteric teachings uh, even in there's clues to it even in mainstream religion if you know how to interpret um, what's being said so ultimately what are the consequences of humanity not knowing where they came from like truly not knowing why we're here where we came from and where we go back to the consequence is the level of 
dysfunctional behavior, division, and ultimately suffering that we see all through the world. Um, and I guess for me, the moment I came out of that coma, within the first breath or two, I knew and shared with my mum that I had to teach almost immediately. I, I told mum this. You know, I'm 42 kilos and look like a deformed freak that had just had a face filled with titanium. But I plugged back into this place. Consciousness came from that unified source that I'm talking about. It's It's unconditioned everything that is intrinsic to you okay like everything that you could find in the heart when you're in stillness that exists and it's eternal when you die everything that you have thought all the mind energy all the beliefs that you've held and the ways that we've said this is how things are and I, I am sure of it ultimately all of that disappears and is not the ultimate truth it's one potential one conditioned state of consciousness out of limitless potentials so that's today's video guys when you die what happens is the I am insert your name here this is my story insert story here these are my material possessions and things I think. All that the I am mistakenly took itself to be, it disappears instantly. And we return to just I am. That infinite loving consciousness. It's the coming home of all coming homes. It, it's the home that's within every single one of us. And there's absolutely nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing for us to be afraid of when we know where we came from. But in this world that we're programmed to believe in, like with monkeys, with monkeys and mind energy and a dog-eat-dog -dog world and... The madness when you turn on your television set tonight. Oh my God, yeah, of course there's something to be afraid of. What sort of world do we create when I believe I came from a monkey because of random mutation over long periods of time? That's for another video. So, DamienHorton.com. You guys can find out more live events, register your interest. My new book will be below. There will be a link there. And... Um, yeah, my music up on Spotify. Peace.